before even if you, uh, we go in detail, let's understand a little bit about the data warehousing concepts, and um, and then I'll go into the ETL part, or um, maybe uh, I can do it in the reverse. But let's let's understand the ETL. Okay, um, let's let's do the ETL first, and then I will do the data warehousing part. Just a minute. Let me make it a full screen. Okay, so ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. That's a, a um, uh, that, that's a full form of the ETL: extract, transform, and load. And what does what? So ETL is a process, and what exactly it does is, I'm talking about a process who has the capability of reading data from multiple applications, multiple applications, and then transform the data as per the business requirements and then load the data into a data warehouse or a data mark. Okay, that's the whole purpose of an ETL. Now let's understand <coughs> why at all I need such kind of a tool. Okay, all data are inside my organization, why I need such kind of tool at all. So few, um, few things happens over the period of time. So let's say I'm talking about a mid-sized to so big-sized company which has evolved over a period of, let's say, maybe 15, 20, 30 years, or uh, 35 years of time. So during this 35 years of time, few things happen. One is technology changes over the period of time. So let's say 20 years or 25 years back, I used to take, um, store all my data into um, uh, mainframe. Then eventually, the, the uh, database came into picture. So data DBMS came into market. So some of the departments of the company decided that okay, they they don't go, they don't want to go with mainframe now. They want to go with the uh, database. Okay, and then eventually it, um, CRM came into picture. So CRM like SAP, Salesforce, Sybil. So this this these different softwares came into market and some of the other departments decided that okay we want to store our our data into um, some of the CRM systems okay and over this 50 35 years of time maybe some of the acquisition have happened so some of the migrations happen so that that's why your data data in the organization is not centralized to be more precise maybe your sales data is stored in the SAP. Maybe your manufacturing data is in, into some other system. Maybe in Oracle. Maybe your, your uh, HR data is in Salesforce. So different business units in, in, uh, store their data in different technologies over the period of time. Maybe some of the business units actually didn't exist earlier. They, they are recent. They, they just came up in recent five years. So they, they and they took up let's say they started storing the data in the cloud. So what I'm trying to tell you is data is stored all different possible ways throughout the organization. And this is very normal, okay? This is very, very normal in any of the mid-sized to big organizations. Now, that's fine. So each of these units individually is working excellent, okay? No complaints. So. Uh, sales as an individual unit is working fine, and um, the manufacturing as an individual unit department is working great. So every, uh, as an individual unit, everyone is working good. But the problem comes, or the challenge comes, when I'm trying to look or integrate the data between different business units where the data are stored in different technologies. What does it mean is, let's say I am trying to build a dashboard or trying to build a report which um, to make my overall all, all, um, um, supply chain to be optimized. Okay, when I'm saying supply chain to be op optimized, that means in, um, when I, I should know when exactly an order should be placed is based on my sales and my inventory in the warehouse and also in the store okay so based and different other factors let's say if it's uh, holiday season if it's 
it's a Thanksgiving or uh, I then have to order more inventory. If it's maybe January, February, <laughs> order those inventory. So based on different and different and variables, but one of those are manufacturers. Uh, one of them are the sales, how much sales are happening, and also one of them is the, how much stock I have in in store and also in the warehouse. Based on those those uh, variables, I will play, I should be able to play. Uh, when I'm saying I means not an individual person and sitting and doing the orders, but okay, it's automated system. So um, should be able to place the order and then. Or whenever an order is placed, how optimized way I can bring that order from the manufacturer to the store. So for that, I need the data from the sales department, I need the data from the warehouse department, I need the data from the manufacturer department, right? And maybe some of the other departments, the supply chain department. So I need data from various different departments or uh, business units to generate such kind of reports. Now for that, what I have to do is now I have to extract the data from all these different places, now, right? So when I uh, when I have to extract the data from all these different places, uh, now I need some kind of process or tool or software, something who can actually read data, who has the capability of reading data from, let's say, um, uh, Salesforce, let's say uh, SAP, let's say Mainframe, let's say. Uh, Oracle, DB2, anything, cloud, so you just name it, you should be have the capability of reading data from any of these places because you don't know uh, what are the all different technologies used to store the data and eventually if, if new technologies evolve, uh, you will be storing data in uh, other places as well, let's say Hadoop, right? So this is called your ETO, Extract, Transform, and Load. Now, Informatica is a ETL tool, okay? Try to understand this. Informatica is a tool. It's an ETL tool who has the capability of doing all these three, extract, transform, and load. Um, uh, if you see a screen of lady, I don't know, but uh, I'm sharing the, uh, sharing the, uh, slide and I am hoping that everyone is able to see my slides. Uh, okay, I, I'm hoping everyone is uh, able to see my slide. So maybe you have to refresh your window, maybe. Uh, so, so what I was telling is. Is, um, so that who has the capability of extracting data from anywhere, it, it, it can connect to any system, extract the data, and then transform the data and load the data. And then when I'm saying the loading the data, it actually loads the data into a data mart or data warehouse. Now, what is the purpose of a data mart or a data warehouse? So let's go back a little bit again. So when I have taken the example of the supply chain and to, for, to process my order and uh, make the whole process optimized, starting from manufacture, starting starting from placing the order and getting the um, inventory in my store. So I want to optimize the whole process, make sure the um, correct correct order is placed and optimize uh, correct amount is stored in the warehouse and also in the store and the whole supply chain should be optimized. So if I want to plan, I'm planning to create a, some kind of dashboard or some kind of reports like this and want to see every week. It, then it's very, and then based on that, I want to take some decisions also, right? It's, a lot, it's not like I want to just see the reports, that's it, no. I want to take some decisions also. So for that, what is very important is how do you know that uh, if my warehouse has this much X amount of, let's say, a particular item, so let's say uh, a Christmas tree. So how do I know when should, when is the best time to order a Christmas tree? Is it the beginning of November or mid of November or immediately after Thanksgiving? I have to know that time, right? 
So I have to make sure that, uh, uh, let's say if I'm a Walmart, I have to make sure that all these Christmas trees should be in my, uh, in my stores, not in the warehouse, in my store before, let's say, a certain time because uh, um, if, 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 my, if Walmart does not carry that, then the customers will buy from the uh, competitive stores. So I have to know when is the best time to bring this So uh, when is the best time to um, uh, to uh, order it and bring the inventory in my warehouse, or maybe I can actually order it and bring the inventory in the warehouse and bring it in my store and not later on. But then again, I have to also understand how much investment I want to do. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is you you have like the management, the leadership team takes a lot of decisions based on this and these different uh, data points and variables but how do I know that question is answered from the history right so if I look into the sales for the last three years I see okay people actually start buying the uh, uh, um, uh, Christmas tree maybe from the uh, just uh, after the Thanksgiving Okay, so there's no point in bringing all these Christmas trees before Thanksgiving. Or maybe I can just bring few of the items in the Thanksgiving to test as if um, people are buying it or not. So what I have to do is I have to look at the historical data. For everything, I have to look into the historical data to understand the pattern of buying patterns of all my customers, right? So that way I, can, I know oh, when I should bring in the inventory and when is the best time to give the deals also. So I don't lose customers because I'm making I'm late to give out the deals and also I don't lose money because I'm giving too early the deals. So these things, all these, these decisions can be taken only if you know the historical data. If you have, as you can see the historical data, then only you can and, uh, take the decisions. So this data warehouse or data mart is basically stores the historical data, but not in a raw form. It's in a processed form. So when I'm saying processed form means it's already, the data is already processed as per the business requirement. So that's why your T, ETL, T, T, T stands. So transform. So data is already transformed as per the business requirement and loaded into the data warehouse. So this is a very high level uh, short idea about what ETL is and what data warehouse or data mart is. Now, I will give you a chance to ask me questions. And so uh, let's spend a few minutes to answer questions. If you have any questions, either you can raise your hand or you can and ask the question in the chat window. Any questions so far? No? Okay, I don't see any questions, so I think we are good. Okay, I see a question, hold on. So Rakesh has a question, what's the basic difference between data mart and data warehouse? So data mart is a, you can think of data mart is a miniature form of a data warehouse which serves the purpose of a particular business unit. So let's say uh, I want to build reports based on the sales only. So that means I I will bring in only the sales data. So I this data mart. So that's called a data mart, which holds the only a particular business unit data. That's your data mart. Now data warehouse is basically the integration of multiple data marts. So you build all the data marts and eventually as per the requirement, you integrate them and create the uh, data warehouse, which is your enterprise data warehouse. Answers your questions, Rakesh? Okay, anyone else have a question? No. So let's go straight away to the uh, Informatica tool. It's so to start the Informatica tool, what you have to do is you go to your start and then you will see Power Center Designer. So you will go to all programs and there you will see Informatica 9.1.0 and you will see client and you will see client, Power Center client. 
and you will click the pause on the designer. Okay, that's how you open the Informatica tool. Um, before starting Informatica, a few things I want to tell you is the way I take the training, in first of all, all my classes would be evening classes. I mean, weekdays are evening classes and weekends are morning classes. Okay? Now, um, uh, right now, I don't know what are the class days and timings because what I do is usually with the uh, on the first day of the class, I sit with all my students and uh, we try to figure out which time works for everyone. Okay, so and we try to find out four such slots or four such, such windows, of which e when everyone is available, and we stick to that times throughout the end of the class. Yeah, I, I'll come to the testing part. Hold on for a minute, okay? So we stick to that uh, to that time throughout the end of the class. So this is one thing, and. Uh, usually on the first day of the class, I give the basic concepts of database, okay, which I'm not going to cover right now because we are more focused to the uh, informatica. So, but on the first day of the actual class, I I, I um, give the basic concepts of database and SQL, and also I um, give some handouts and give some assignments for the, um, the Oracle part. But we do on the database part, but I we don't uh, take the database class uh, from the second class onwards. So it's now you, it's now uh, each individual's responsibility. If they want to do some um, hands-on in database. I'll be showing all the details how to do the hands-on, but they have to do it it offline. In, and at each day, they can come back to me with your questions. You, it doesn't matter whether it's a informatica or database question, but you get a chance to ask me questions every day. Okay, but I we don't take a live class on the database, only on the first day. Okay, now coming to the uh, tester. So if you are looking for an ETL testing job, one thing you have to understand. And so this is this is a very classic example I give to everyone. So just think about it. If you are, a, uh, let's say, if I go to an interview and I tell that, okay, I am a programmer. So the immediate question which is going to come to me is, what programming language do you know? And let's say I tell that, okay, you know what, I am a programmer, but I don't know any programming language. So this does not sound good. This absolutely makes no sense. So similarly, if you are an ETL tester, and you tell that, okay, I'm an ETL tester, but I don't know any ETL tool. If you tell that, that does not sound good. It does not make any sense. So as an ETL tester, you have to know an ETL tool. There are many ETL tools in the market. Informatica is one of them. It's easiest one. It's most widely used one. And so uh, you have to know Informatica. Uh, to become uh, ETL testing, ETL tester. But as a developer, now let's just do a little bit comparison between uh, ETL developer and ETL tester. As an ETL developer, you have to know this tool almost, let's say, I would say 70 to 80% of this tool. But as a tester, you have to know 30% of the tool. Okay? So what I usually do, who, during the class, uh, I tell, like, whenever I, mm, whenever I take the class, I tell very clearly, okay, this much, up to this much, it is for a developer, and, or maybe up to this much, it's for tester, and whatever I'm gonna tell you now, or show you now, it's good to know, but it's not required for a tester, but definitely required for a developer. So I will, during the, complete course, I'll be making a very clear distinction between how much is required for a developer and how much is required for a tester. Okay, any questions, anyone else, before we start? Uh, installation part is, don't worry about the installation part. Once you enroll for this course, we will install the software in your system. It's, and it's a full version of the system, uh, software. You will have access throughout your life. So. Uh, it will not expire, so you can, after the, even the course is complete, you can just do the hands-on.
Uh, I will tell you. Don't don't worry. <clears throat> uh, um, which part of the tester? So it's basically the tool is still the same. It's, okay, I got your point. So um, for a tester, there is no separate tool. Okay, ETL testing is not a separate tool. In the same tool itself, else else you will know. Uh, I'll tell you what how much. What part is required for a tester and what part is required for a developer? It's the same two. Does that answer the question? Abdul Aziz? Okay. So let's just start it, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I will, so this is how your, this is called your power center designer interface. Uh, I'm going to double, so and these are these green, these are called your repositories, okay? Double click on the repository, you get the user ID and password. So you put the user ID and password. Now, in the real environment, you will see the development has a repository like this, and there are so many different folders. So you will have access, full access to one of those folders which is meant for you. Okay? And for rest of the folders, you will have read access. So actually, you can go into the folder and see, but you cannot do any changes. So let's say I will use a free station. That's the folder I'm going to use. OK, this is an existing one. I'll create a new one. Actually, you know what? Let's just delete this. I'm going to delete all of this. I'll just delete this. And this also. Just a minute. Let me just delete it then. Okay. Now, um, this is a window which is called your Power Center Designer. Now, um, Basically, you will see there are three major windows in which you will be working. One is your pass in the designer. This is your pass workflow manager, and there is one more which is your. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll open it later on. Hold on, but let me tell you what are the purpose of each of these windows. So the way I describe this three window is is very much similar to your. Let's say I'm planning for a vacation. Okay. Now, when you plan for a vacation, you can see the vacation. Uh, you can see uh, you can or uh, you can describe the vacation in three steps. So, vac a vacation and is uh, a three-step process. That's what I can say. The first step is basically the planning. So, um, on the first step, what I do is I try to plan out what are the places I will be visiting, what are my dates, what are my itinerary, what are um, like uh, which days I'm gonna go, which are the different places I'm gonna go, how many days I'll, I'll go. So basically, it, what I do is I will do a planning on the first phase. Now, second phase, and but what you have to understand in the first phase, you don't do any kind of bookings, right? You don't book hotels, you don't book tickets, you just plan it. Now, on the second phase, or step two, what you do is you just start booking your flights, booking your hotel, booking your um, uh, rental, and everything. If you're planning to go to an amusement park, book the tickets. So you just book everything. You are not, till you have not gone to your vacation. You're still at home, all right? On the step three is basically you are now in vacation. So on the, on the particular day, you take the flight and you just start from your home so that's when your vacation starts right so that's just step three so exactly the same thing happens here also b is for design which is very much similar to your planning of a vacation w is for workflow manager uh, which is very much similar for booking your <coughs> hotels or rental flights and all and m is stands for workflow monitor where you can actually see what is happening, how many records are read from source, how many records are loaded into target, how the records are transformed, so you can actually see what is happening, okay? 
Now, any questions so far? No. Okay. So let me do one thing. Let's just. Um, I will do a very basic mapping today. Um, maybe I will be not able to finish today, but we'll start it. So uh, let's try to assume one more thing. Let's assume that this is my source file. Okay. So I'm assuming that there is an upstream system. When I'm saying upstream system, maybe there is another team. Okay. There is a separate team who will send me a file called employees. Okay, they are going to send me a file called employees. My job is to read the data from this file and do a little bit of transformation. We will do a little bit of transformation. Let's say I will contact me the first name and last name. Okay, that's the basic, the very basic uh, mapping. So I will contact me the first name and last name. And I will create another file, but not with all the columns here. Okay? So that's what I'm my uh, job. So that's my assignment. That's what I have to do. All right? So I am considering this file, this is a, and then the system, the different team who is supposed to send this file daily, on a daily basis. Um, here, they have sent me a sample file. To for my development, okay. So usually, usually, if you ask for the uh, teams to send you the sample file, they send you a sample file. So they send you, they have sent you a sample file, um, and then uh, you want to start the development. Okay. Any questions so far before we start the development? Okay. Now, in the designer, one thing understand very clearly in the designer you don't care about the data right now because that in the designer we will be doing the design based on the structure of source and target we don't care what data is actually going to come okay we care about the source and structure so and then you see there are different working uh, workspace here which is you see here this is your source analyzer this is your target designer transformation developer mapper designer and mapping designer so in this two day session we will see see the source analyzer target designer and mapping designer these are the three with the uh, three workspace we will see in detail okay now let's go to the source analyzer source analyzer is used to create the Structure of my source. Okay, so, so so I can use the source analyzer to create a structure of my source. Now, because I have a sample file provided by the source system, what I can do is I can I can actually import the structure from that file. I don't have to create it from scratch. So what you do is you go to source, you do import from file. It will open up this window. Now you point that particular file which you want to import. I'll go to C drive and in C drive I have SRC files. And then you select file type as all files. And you select employees.txt. Click OK. As soon as you do this, this window will come up. Now, if you look to my first row, this is nothing but the header of each column, right? So this tells me the column name. But this is not a data. This is not data at all. This is just the column names. So what you can tell is import field names from the first line. Okay. And, and okay, uh, before going there, I, I want to show you one more thing. If you look to my file, I, um, file, this is called a delimited file. Okay, this is a, called a comma delimited file, CSV, comma separated file. Okay, but this is called a delimited file. Now, 
Why this is called a delimiter file? Because if you look here, each column value is delimited by uh, or separated by a comma. So if I look here, this is my employee ID because first column is employee ID. This one is my first name. This is my first name, right? So this is called a delimited file. Another kind of file is a fixed switch file. We will see that later on in the training. And so now, when you are importing the structure of the file, here is the option delimited and fixed switch. So for me, it's a delimited file. Now, if you click next, it says, what is your delimiter? So my delimiter is a comma. So I check this box, comma, and then do a next, and actually do finish. So as soon as you do this, what happens is whatever is there in the first row or the header of the file, those column names appear as a, uh, appears in the structure of my file. You got it? Any questions so far? And it has actually identified the data type. Now, because this is a file, I cannot trust on the data type identified by Informatica. So what Informatica does is it looks into the data and try to identify, like try to judge some um, uh, data type, which might be correct, which might not be correct, okay? So for example, if you look into this phone number, it has to be, definitely it has to be string because it has you know, like numbers as well as characters. But if you go to this one, it has identified phone number as number, not string. So what I'm going to do is I will double click this and I want to change them. So I'm, I actually I want to make everything as string. So I will make this one as string, this one as string, salary also string, and manager ID also string, and department ID also string. So everything as string because it's file. I can make everything as string. Okay. Now, yeah, uh, ask me any question. So this is my file. This is how you import the structure of a source from a file if someone has given you a sample file. What, so far, whatever we are learning is required for both tester and developer. So any questions, anyone so far? Salary should be a um, number. I, I agree with you, salary should be number, but what happens is because my source is a file, okay, this is, okay, I, I'll come to that one. Okay, I, I'll come to the data type anyway, but uh, ask me any questions so far you have not understood and uh, you, want, you need any clarification. Anyone? No? Okay. So, and yes, import is same for any kind of source file. Okay. When you say any kind of source file means you're saying if it's a, um, if it's a, uh, um, a text file and if it's an XML file, yeah, yeah. So most of them are same, so that's why we are going to cover our um, CSV file, we are going to cover uh, the um, uh, database, we are going to cover XML, we are going to cover COBOL file. So these are the four different categories we are going to cover here. Okay. Now, okay, to answer the question that why my uh, salary is, uh, why I have made the salary string. So one thing you have to understand here is this is a file, and in file there is always chance of getting in, um, incorrect data, and there is no way uh, you can fix the data before extracting, okay? If it's a database, I, you understand, if I define the data type as numeric, then database will not allow you to insert non-numeric values. But in a file, there is no way I can put that check. I, ca I, cannot, I cannot restrict it. I, 
let's say for example, this is the phone number, I can actually change it like this. No one can stop me. So that, but what I want to do is, I want to read all the data. I don't want to know or miss any data. I want to read all the data. So that's why the rule of the thumb or standard followed throughout the industry is, whenever you are reading data from a file, make all the data types as string. Now after reading the data, you can put your own check saying that I want to load the data where my salary is numeric. I want to load the data where my phone number is in such and such format. You getting my point? So that way you can make those checks and load the data, and make the check before loading the data and validate the data. And does that answer your question? Rakesh? Okay. Uh, now, no, um, okay. So, uh, so once, um, okay, this is how you import it. So after importing, if you want to change the name of a file, the name of a column, you want to change the data type of a column, you can always go ahead and change it, okay? You can always go ahead, ahead and change it here, right? Uh, similarly with the data type and precision also. Okay, once this is done, what you have to do is, you need to save this, which is control S. Once you save it, in the left hand side of the window, you what you should notice here is, under the source subfolder. So this is your main folder. Precision is your main folder. After uh, Under the main folder, there are so many subfolders. Under that, there is one, one of those subfolders is sources. And as soon as you um, import or, or create any source structure, you will see that sh that will show up in this, um, under the source subfolder. Now similarly, what I want to do is I want to create another uh, another structure which is for target. So because my source is now ready, the structure is ready. Similarly, I want to create a stru structure for my target. But for target, I do not have any sample file where I can actually import the structure. So what I can do is you go to the target designer. So anything related with source, you do it in the source analyzer. Anything related with source. Anything related with target, you do it in the target designer. So I, I'll go to the target designer, I'll go to the target, and I cannot do import from file uh, because I do not have that file. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do create, and I'll give some name, let's say E-M-P-L-O-Y-E-E -E underscore FF. So basically I'm creating another flat file, FF. And you have to select the type, what type of um, structure you are, you are creating. So I am creating a flat file structure. So you select it from that list and create. Okay, done. Right, so this structure is done, created. You go to columns and it's an empty structure. Now what I'm gonna do is I will add the, you click here, which is add a new column to this table. And then let's say I add the column names in floor E underscore ID, which is string three, right? And then I want to add one more column, let's say full name underscore name. Let's make it 30. So this, whatever whatever precision I am putting here, it, uh, you don't have to decide on the precision. So um, when someone gives you the assignment, they will provide this information. What, is, what are the column names of your target and what are the precision, what are the data types? This information will be provided to you, so don't worry. Okay. Uh, and let's say just put the department ID. Department underscore ID. Stream team. Then apply and then OK. Save. As soon as you do that, 
you see in the targets subfolder this is this is show up i want to show you one more thing in the source that is in case if i do not have a sample file from where i can import the structure then what should i do i'll go to sources and same way i'll do a create let's say employ let's just do test test then you select the select the type uh, it should be a flat file okay and create done that's it and then and someone will provide you the column names and the data type we just create them save any questions so far anyone so what we have done today is we have successfully created a source structure and we have basically we have successfully imported a source structure and we have successfully created a target structure. And in the target, one more thing I want to do is double click the target. And if you see here in the, in the bottom, it says delimited. What I want to do is I want to change it to fixed fit. Okay, I want to make the target as fixed fit. Um, uh, I, I have a question. Do we, we can drag and drop from source to target? Yes, actually, you can drag and drop to the source and try, source to target. So let's say, for example, I have a test here, and I want to create a similar structure of target, which is like test, right? So what you do is in the right hand side you open the target designer I'll clear all and you drag from source into your target as soon as you do that you see here the target is created with the same name and same structure but let's go back to the source and clear all if you drag and drop let's do this okay drag and drop from target to source it's not allowed so you can create a target from source to target same structure but reverse is not possible hope answers that answers your question right mm, santos has a, has a question is it possible to copy some columns from source to target and by uh, without creating Yes, Santos, this is how you can do it. You, you now you got the target and then let, let's say for this one, uh, I got this one and now I wanna remove this last four columns. You just select them and this is cut, you just cut it out. So this is what, you know. okay. Um, so we have successfully created a source structure. We have created a target structure. Uh, we know the basics of the designer. Any questions, anyone, so far? No? Okay, then I will keep this much for today, and we will continue this session tomorrow also. So uh, today we have learned what is basic ETL, what is basic data warehouse concepts, why do we need ETL, and then we have a basic look and feel of um, Informatica, we have created one of the source structure, we have created one of the target structure. That's what we have done today. And tomorrow we are going to create a complete mapping. We will read the data from source, load the data into target. Uh, we'll learn that tomorrow. And so far, whatever we have done is required for um, your uh, testing or developer, either. I, I have already recorded the session. You will receive the recording. I will send out uh, the course content to everyone. So have a look to the course content. Any questions, anyone, before I end the session? Uh, yes, we will we'll learn the database not in the pre session, but that's the, in the actual class. Um, uh, Rajesh has a question. I'm hoping this will help me with changing my career. Just want to know how the job market is. Yeah, so that uh, job market is right now very good uh, for each year because everyone is going moving towards BI. So job market is real good right now. 
Right. Um, Munir has a question. I could not log in for the first 10 minutes. Wait for the 10. Okay, that's okay, Munir. Uh, I have recorded a session so you can watch the recordings and ask me questions if you have tomorrow. Um, so actual, uh, yeah, hold on for a minute. Yeah. Um, uh, Santos has a question. When do you, so actual class is going to start from next, next week. Most likely next Tuesday will be our first class, but I do not have the complete schedule of the classes. But as I told you, on the first day we'll, uh, we'll decide on the schedule. Um, uh, Rina has a question, how is Informatica useful for test care? So if you are actually looking for a equal testing kind of a job, then Informatica is going to help you. But if you are you want to stick to a uh, automation or manual testing, then Informatica will not help you. Uh, Pinky, you have a question? Yeah, Pinky, I, I'll unmute you. Hold on for a minute. Uh, either you can put your question in the chat window or I can unmute you. It's up to you. Okay. No, uh, I, I, we cannot hear you, Pinky. I'm going to unmute you. Hold on for a minute. I have not unmuted you. Hold on. Yeah, Pinky, go ahead. I think you have also muted yourself, so unmute yourself and then uh, start speaking. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So my question is, uh, like, um, I used uh, Informatica, like, seven years ago. And okay. I, uh, I haven't used since then. And mm -hmm. my goal is to either get an ETL testing position or a uh, 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 Informatica development position. So, um, will it cover yeah, both? So, so will yeah, it so cover the, both yeah, the yeah. So, yeah, let, let, let me tell you. So, the way I do this course is it will cover both the ETL testing as well as development. And Usually I tell people that I, if you are not from a testing background or if you are not from a development background and you really don't know where you want to go, well then I tell, you, I tell them that, okay, let's do this. You just finish the complete course and at the end of the course, you decide what is your comfortability. You might, maybe you think that you are comfortable to testing, but after taking the course, I have seen people saying that, no, you know what, I want to go for the development. So, uh, but this course will cover both. At the end of the course, you decide which one you want to choose. And also, I will be working with individuals for the resume. But that would not be a common uh, meeting that is more of a one-on-one -on -one session because everyone's resume is different. And based on your resume, I'll be working with you to, to uh, like uh, what should go in your resume and what extra should you, you should learn as per your resume. Okay, thank you. So, other question is, um, so let's say if I, uh, like after the course is completed and mm -hmm. uh, because I'm currently working but I might not aggressively look for the position, maybe I'll, mm -hmm. I'll get uh, any interview after three, four months and mm -hmm. then um, will I be able to get the help uh, like uh, yeah. if, yes, I, yes. if I so, so, my skills so this, or... This is, this is what I do. First thing is, let's say you take this course and for some reason you want to take a break or whatever you tell, told, you want to learn more before you go into the market and it took, let's say, three, four months. And by the time mm -hmm. you are into the market, maybe you, uh, you forget some of the concepts. So the good part of this course is you take this course once and then you can repeat the course for free. So after four months, let's say you want you are actually started searching for the job. You you I, usually I suggest people that if you have a break between the course and searching a job, then you join the course again for free, so that it keeps refreshing all the concepts parallelly. So you start, you are searching a um, job and you are learning also not learning basically you are refreshing your concepts. So this is one thing. Second one is. In the job search, if you need help, I will be helping you. 
Yeah, Have that was the question. Like, uh, let's say if I have an interview and I need help in preparing all the questions, mm -hmm. uh, or if let's say first interview didn't go well due to mm -hmm. some reason, then for the next preparation, like if I need some help, will I get that kind of help? Yes. So I I just keep continue uh, um, in touch with all my uh, students. So <laughs> what you have to do is. If you get an interview and you couldn't answer yeah. most of the questions, what you have to do is you have to put all the questions into an email and send it to me. Okay. And then I will give you a particular time, let's say I say, okay, let's sit this Sunday for 30 minutes, one-on-one -on -one session, and I will go through all these questions. So it's always good to have the questions beforehand so that I also know what are, like, if I have to send you some material, I can send you some material. Uh, if I have to go back and see some of the questions to answer uh -huh. you, I can do that in my homework. So this is what I do. Uh huh. Okay. So it, there is no time frame, right? Uh, like maybe after a one year or two year. I no, no, there is no time frame. No, 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 time. no time frame. Okay. So as long as so one thing I, this has to be understood by each and every candidate that. Once the course is complete, then the initiative has to be taken from your end. So what I do is, if, if, if some of you have already taken the course from me earlier, so you will see um, every month or every one and a half months, I send out the email to all my previous students, asking them that if they need any help on the resume preparation, if they need any help for um, job search. Some of them respond, resume, okay, I need some help in the resume preparation. Some of them come back, okay, I actually I want to take the course one more time. And some of them say, okay, you know what, I'm now ready for the job. Help me to find a job. So this, uh, I, I do this, honestly, I do this for all the students. Um, with every every one, one month or one and a half month, I send out a mass email to everyone. Okay. Um, and the, uh, the tool which will be installed during the course, we mm -hmm. will have tool like uh, forever, right? Because yes, right so now I'm not install, yeah. Forever. So we will install the tool in, into your system, and mm -hmm. the full version of the tool that will not expire. So mm -hmm. you have after the course is done, you have the tools forever for your um, hands-on. In case for in case, let's say. Your system crashed and you don't have that anymore, right? So you just contact us, we'll install it again. Okay, okay. Because I'm not using Informatica right now, so I mm -hmm. will definitely need a tool to practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is the, so installation of the tool is a part of the course. So, okay. And, and usually I tell uh, everyone that make sure the installation is done before you come to the second class, not the first class, but before you come to the second class. Make sure the installation is done. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a uh, DWO kind of concept. Is that covered? Uh, I, D I just got a DBO? Uh, I'm not sure, but I was expected to know DWO. What is that? DWO? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so I, I will send out anyway the full complete okay. course content. So you oh. will have a. Uh, uh, have a uh, look to it, but if there okay. is any new concept coming in, you uh -huh. can always tell me, ask me in the within the uh -huh. course. If I don't okay. know, I'll I'll look into it. I'll then um, tell you in the class. Like if I don't know, I have to learn it, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, there's a lot of SQL, right, involved for the no, 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 no. There's no SQL in this. There course. is minimal SQL involved in Informatica, so that's why I tell that. Uh, a database concepts is you need the database concepts and SQL okay. part is the basic SQL, not the complex. Okay. Very, very, very basic SQL required. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. But in real world, they use the complex, right? That we have to learn by other codes. No, right? in real world also, I'm telling telling you. In real world also, complex SQLs are used, but you don't have to write complex SQL. Somebody will give you a complex. Oh, you have okay. to use that SQL into that tool. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank okay. You. Mm, thank you. Okay. I, I hope I have answered all the yeah. questions. Yeah. So okay. another question. Like, 
if I want to enroll it, uh, mm -hmm. when is the class starting? Like, what I'm is the... planning to start the class from next Tuesday. So that's what I'm planning, targeting right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have weekend classes or it's just a weekday? Yeah, so um, that's what I was telling you at the beginning that um, right now I don't know. On the okay. first day of the class, we will be deciding with all the students that what uh, what class should be, what would be the class days and time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Thank you, Pinky. Mm, I see someone else have a question. Uh, Jashankar, you have a question, right? Jashankar, I have unmuted you. Hi, Jashankar. Okay. We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I have uh, the link uh, because I I, I joined uh, at the last time uh, the ten minutes before, so I couldn't see the uh, the introduction about the data warehousing and the. Uh, okay. So, so don't worry, uh, Jason. <coughs> I have recorded this session, so I'll be sending it out to everyone. Okay. Okay, so you can, uh, and then tomorrow also we have a class, so you can come tomorrow also with your questions. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So, uh, okay. I, I could, uh, tomorrow I can uh, have the link, right? Uh, you do not have, a, can, you, can you send me, ping me your uh, email ID? I'll make sure that you have a link. Okay. Here it is, or, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, say, I want me to send it. Uh,